Hey, good morning, everyone, and happy Memorial Day. Glad to have you all with me. Uh, I wasn't sure how many people are going to show up given it's uh, you know, a holiday, and I assume everyone's been uh, maybe on vacation or whatever else, uh, but glad to have you all here with me. You know, I, I wanted to give some of my thoughts on Memorial Day patriotism and kind of where we're at as a country. And of course, we're going to questions. If you have questions, leave them in the chat. We'll get to them. We talk about some other things as well, like the debt ceiling, if you want to talk about it. But, you know, going back to Memorial Day, you know, I, I feel like patriotism in the United States is dying. And I feel it's dying both on the right and the left. And I think this is a very unhealthy thing for a country because patriotism is what what holds up generationally the idea uh, that represents what a nation is. You can only go a couple generations without that before basically you have a restructuring of a nation. And I mean, I know some people maybe think maybe that's where America needs to go. And I, I believe there are people on the right and left who do believe that, in fact. It may, maybe it would be a good thing. But my concern is that what America represents and has represented for the entire world was, was not something the world typically had through most of history. If you look at the, the, you know, the annals of history, typically the law, this, the law of the world in which we live was that the strong ruled by force. And that was always how it was, no matter where you were in the world, no matter which empire you lived under, conquering, conquering by force, ruling by force, uh, the strong conquering the weak, that was always the nature of this world. And the only anomaly we've had, the little blip in the very long line of history, was, you know, through the United States, essentially. I mean, you could argue even the Roman Empire achieved relative peace. You could argue that some empires achieved relative peace, but they did it through constant war and, also, and often very extreme brutality. Um, you can even look, for example, at the, you know, the former government in Mexico. Was it the, the Aztecs or the Incas? I can't remember which one it was. It was the Aztecs. And where, of course, you know, they were known for mass human sacrifice. And the way that, the way that worked, actually, and I, I, know this from, I know this from reading books written in the 1800s, you know, about this history. Uh, the way that worked typically was that the government there would go out and they would massacre the smaller tribes on a regular basis. And, you know, you might think, oh, they did it because they needed slaves. No, they did it because they wanted human sacrifice. Uh, because basically, anytime you had a coronation for a new official, anytime there was a coronation for a new leader, they believed that the amount of human sacrifice is what would lay the foundation for that new system, that there had to be mass bloodshed. And so they would oftentimes just dominate and slaughter and horribly kill a lot of these smaller, uh, smaller tribes and such. Uh, which is actually funny enough why when the conquistadors, the Spanish conquistadors arrived in Mexico, and remember, you know, the Spaniards were sent from Spain as a crusade. The taking of, Amer the, taking of the Americas was a Spanish crusade. Uh, the idea was to humanize and Christianize the New World. That was, that, was, that was the exact phrase they had, to humanize and Christianize the New World, sent by the Pope himself. And you had a small number of Spanish conquistadors, like I think it was like 300 men, it was not a lot, uh, who were able to unite the smaller tribes who did you know, engage in an overthrow of the Mexican government at the time, and formed, even before the United States, actually very strong empires throughout most of Latin America. The United States, or what is now the United States, was the last to be taken. It was very, for some reason, it was very hard for them to ever achieve it. Uh, the first colony in America was actually a uh, it was a French colony in Florida, in fact. And they built a functioning colony in Florida, and the Spaniards actually rolled in, killed everybody, men, women, and children, burned it, and that was the end of it. Then took it over, well, didn't burn it, they took it over. Then the French, out of spite, rolled back in, killed everybody there, and then abandoned it. And that was, you know, they had various attempts to establish colonies. People talk about Jamestown as being, you know, the original colony. There's a reason why we recognize the pilgrims and not the people of Jamestown as being, you know, essentially the first people to begin the United States. Why is that? Jamestown did not represent America. Jamestown was where you had 1619 Project and all that stuff. Jamestown was a failed state. 
Jamestown maintained the same type of contract that he had under the Plymouth Plantation, uh, which was the idea of essentially shared redistribution of food and all that stuff. It was failing. Uh, Jamestown did in fact have slaves, although you could argue they were brought by accident. It was, it was a, a ship that captured another ship that had slaves on it. They arrived in the Americas of these, these freed slaves, actually. Uh, who then arrived there and actually it was one of those slave one of those former slaves who you know really did not become a slave when he was here uh who actually fought for his right to own slaves it was actually brought here by one of the black slavery was introduced by one of the black slaves because uh, he sued to have the right to own slaves uh, because the the white settlers didn't want it jamestown actually maintained it was again jamestown after king james it was a british colony it was not representative of the pilgrims and so on, who were a very, very different type. They maintained the same type of contract the Plymouth, the Plymouth Plantation initially had, which was really like a type of socialist redistribution type contract, which only when the Plymouth Plantation got rid of that did they succeed. And they were also massacred, brutally massacred, by one of the Native American tribes very shortly after all of that. Um, in fact, yeah, that, that was King Philip's War. King Philip, one of the Native Americans, brutally massacred Jamestown, killed all of them, or just about all of them. Like, I mean, it was a very brutal war. And the reason King Philip did that, I believe it was his father, they had made peace with the Indians. And, uh, you know, basically they were mad because, of course, the settlers coming to America were converting a lot of the Native Americans to Christianity. King Philip saw that as an assault on their culture. And so he not only killed all the, Ameri all the, all the European settlers he could, but he also killed, massacred all the Indian Christians. He massacred all of them. Uh, and that's the history of Jamestown. Plymouth and the Plymouth Plantation... And you can still read you can still read the old books in this. The journals are still. In fact, I have I have copies of them. In fact, they're fantastic, and I, I recommend reading them. And I, I think the world would be a better place if if more Americans did read them. The Plymouth Plantation was was the root of America, and we recognize it as such, and always have recognized it as such for a key reason. It was the success story that began the full settlements across the United States. It was people who were fleeing religious persecution, right? It was Protestants. It was people who were brutally persecuted in Europe when you had, of course, the Spanish Inquisition and laws restricting you know, heresy and so on. If you read the old Christian Bibles at that time, the Protestant Bibles, because the printing press basically gave the religion back to the people. Uh, it was no longer that you had to listen to you know, an agent of the state, essentially, uh, interpreting your religion for you, you can go and study it yourself, and you can come to your own conclusions, and self-study, and self-understanding, and self-responsibility became the creed of a new people, established by, really, this new, this new view of morality. Those individuals fled, uh, of course, the Netherlands, right? And, of, of course, came to the United States as the pilgrims. They, it was a very narrow success, them coming here. They built a colony. They purchased that land from the Indians. They bought it. The, the, in fact, the, the documents of them buying it still exist. And oftentimes they would buy it multiple times because they'd buy it from one Indian you know, tribe. And they'd be like, okay, thank you. Then another Indian tribe would come in. They'd be like, hey, you have to pay us because they stole it from us. And then they'd pay them too. And then the next tribe would come in and say, no, you have to pay us because they stole it from us. And then they stole it from them. And they'd have to buy it again. And that happened a lot in America. They would buy the land from the Indians. The contracts of the purchases still exist. And the Indians would make them pay multiple times regardless, you know. But basically, there was, a, there was a very, where the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, there was a very dangerous tribe there that would have killed all of them. They would have massacred them. Uh, but through an, an act of God, or whatever you want to call it, um, th there was an outbreak of some weird disease there, and it killed everyone before the, before the pilgrims arrived.